You're very welcome along to the polling station. And uh, if it seems that William Kajani is somewhere different every week, well, (laughs) he is. He was at the Labour Party conference. He's at the Conservative Party conference. He was at government buildings for the budget. And now you're in Paddington Station, William. What is going on? Um, Some negotiations between me and Virgin Media over broadband prices. Um, So this is coming to you from a place which actually has excellent broadband. So all credit to Network Rail bring you this episode today thanks to network rail now okay let's get to it we have the conservatives we're going to chat the conservatives of britain and the conservatives yeah. in the u.s but this virginia election was fascinating because we have um a very very worrying result here for the democrats really in that we had a strong democratic seat and we had uh, the winner Youngkin, who was effectively was endorsed by donald trump but didn't really want to be seen to be in the trump camp of the gop winning handsomely and creating more problems for joe biden who obviously sleepy joe was seen literally sleeping at the climate conference this week and i'm not laughing at him because i've been at uh, if i were a busy man at 38 i'd be sleeping god knows what i'd be at and i'm 78 when i'm a busy man uh, yes indeed also um uh, our own prime minister boris johnson was apparently caught um, napping masters next to david attenborough which uh, became quite quite a hot point. Um, in fact, Christine Amanpour of CNN um, brought that up in a very good interview, I must say, um, on the fringe of the event, which is probably worth checking out. Um, the Glenn Young to, victory. Yeah, the Glenn Young King victory. And um, this is really big on quite a number of levels. Um, there were quite a few elections in the US last night. Um, ballot measures elsewhere, um, some may all race elsewhere, um, just to go through those. Eric Adams, Democrat, defeated Republican Curtis Silver in New York City, widely anticipated, very blue city there. Michelle Wu, also Democrat, first Asian American and first female to be elected to mayor of Boston. Um, lots of ballot referendums, including in Minneapolis, where voters rejected the proposal to disband the police department 18 months after the murder of George Floyd mm. there. Um, and Virginia, the big one, I think, because it's the big bellwether, um, now, this is uh, a state that Biden took by 10 points. Um, it was a state, I think, that at the beginning of this uh, election, um, Virginians always have a gubernatorial election a year after every presidential election. Um, I think Terry McAuliffe um, had been expected to win. He certainly started um, as the favourite choice. Um, and he was facing somebody who would never run for political office um, uh, and it was actually a really interesting sort of clash almost to 2016. Um, McAuliffe was a veteran party fundraiser. He's close to billing Hillary Clinton. He served a term as governor from 2013 to 27. Um, but he struggled to counter the campaign. Um, it was a good one from Youngkin. It focused on culture wars, um, but there were also traditional Republican issues such as lower taxes. Um, you, you were talking a bit about Trump and that link. Um, the McAuliffe campaign actually tried to try or t- tried to tie. And it um, backfired. East yeah, and they did backfire because um, the densely populated suburbs, yes, Trump was unpopular there, but um, elsewhere, Youngkin beats the fundamentals. Um, and he actually, he made serious inroads um, in some of the suburbs. You were looking at places like Ludon and Chesterfield counties, and two of the largest in the states. Um, it went for McAuliffe by 11 points yesterday, but I wanted it by 25 points. Um, and he just did enough to cut those margins um, to help his cause overall. And it, and it worked for him. Um, and actually, it was a pretty start, startling turnaround. A couple of big things to take away from this. Um, number one, um, it's the traditional governing party struggles. Uh, and it suggests the midterms next year are going to be very difficult, especially if the infrastructure bills can't mm. pass through Congress. It's hindering Biden abroad. It's hindering Biden at home. Yeah, I think you saw the frustration in Glasgow for him. Um, here, it's going to be a problem, um, definitely. Um, those infrastructure bills are vital. The enthusiasm gap is vital. Um, Republicans seemed more motivated. That was a thing that was being foreshadowed. Um, in the end, it did end up coming back to bite them. Um, education is going to be a big, big um, bus and talking point. I think that played a big part um, in the election yesterday. I think it played a big part also up and down ballots. I think um, Republicans, generally speaking, overperformed across the board, um, and they'll be very, very happy with it. It foreshadows trouble on two fronts, I think, particularly for the Democrats. Number one, what can you get done whilst you've got um, control? They they hold the Senate just, um, albeit they need Joe Manchin to play ball. Um, He might be one of the most important men in American politics and world politics right now. Um, And number two, 
can you get people infused about Joe Biden and the Democrats as they are? Um, and can you do that in time, if not for 2022, which is going to come up much faster than I think people think? Um, can you do it for four years on, right? Because it's him or Kamala Harris, the market's telling us. Harris has not had an amazing um, vice presidential term and her political impact hasn't landed. And we have to remember that she was knocked out quite early of the race to be the nominee um, back in 2020. So a lot of big questions for Democrats going forward and for Republicans and one particular Donald Trump a very interesting and very pleasing result, I think. Yeah, have we had any um, repercussions in the market for 2024? Trump's now 100 to 30 to be the next president. Could be value. Um, it still could be. He's also 11 to 10 to be the nominee, um, which is in- which I think is interesting. Republicans are 11 to 10 to be the winning party. It, so if you don't, um, so if you just genuinely think that, um, you know, they'll beat whoever's asked, and, and you could you could make the argument, right, that... Um, anyone but Biden might have been beaten, or anyone but Trump might have won um, in 2020. Mm. Um, indeed, many people, and I am inclined to agree with this, I think, think he'd have won without the pandemic. Um, so that might be of interest. Um, it's 11 to 10 Trump, 5 to 1 Ron DeSantis, 13 to 2 Nikki Haley. These are to be the Republican nominee, by the way. 12 to Pence, 16 to Tucker Carlson, who friended the show Paul Kishpinerti, has been backing for a long time. Um, and then it's 22 is Christian Nome, 22 is Ted Cruz, 25 is Mike Pompeo and Tom Cotton, um, and 28 is bigger. Ivanka Trump is also 28. But um, Trump is now odds on to be the nominee. Um, he's favourite to win. Biden is 15 to 8 to be the Democratic nominee. Two is for Kamala Harris. 14 is Barr. Pete Buttigieg is next in line. Is it me or does Joe Biden look noticeably older than he did 12 months ago like just if, if you if you mm. see and, and this is a very natural thing but he looks drained at times by just how difficult this year has been for him and bear in mind you know the next election is a long way away it is yeah um the presidency does that to you it, it, it does that to you but he has had a particularly brutal one he had to go right into firefights of the pandemic um things are reversing in parts of the u.s i think um there are lots of cultural battles that he's involved in. Every US president has their fair share of culture battles. But I think the culture wars are, are still on the up and up, um, especially in America. There are places, I think, where he just knows he can't reach. Um, and he's also got internal party management issues as well. He needs that infrastructure bill to pass. Um, the sooner the better. Three trillion to 1.75 trillion. You lose plenty of things from that, but getting it through would be an achievement. And... Um, Let's not forget, he's also facing opposition from his left flank too. He so is. There's a lot on his plate. And again, without wanting to make um, any nasty inferences, he, he is old and he, he is older than most presidents. It is possible it has taken physical wear and tear on him. And absolutely. And I, I, I still find it absolutely staggering that in, in, in the normal course of life, in normal jobs, at Joe Biden's age, you're well and truly retired. So let's entrust mm. uh, somebody in his late 70s with effect- effectively the biggest job in the world at a time when the climate is burning and uh, the economy is obviously coming out of the pandemic. I don't know. I, I can't understand America. Sometimes I can't understand the UK either, to be honest. We have some con home league table results here and we have bad news for Sunak, actually, uh, in one respect, as we mark down. And Liz Truss is 85.5 percent less satisfaction action rating at the top of the table yeah um they love her the party members love her the party face will absolutely kind of get enough of this trust um some really interesting moves on shakers um interestingly and this is all data from con homes county table paul goodman and henry hill uh, have come up with these findings um interesting over a third of the panel either dissatisfied or very dissatisfied with the budgets right um half of the party members don't believe human activity is driving climate change. Interesting to note, Alok Sharma, during COP26, is bottom with a net satisfaction of just 5.8%. Quasi Quarteng has taken the fall. That reflects on the energy crisis that could still go further. Um, And also, I noticed that there isn't a lot of love for net zero. So it's going to be really interesting going forward um, because Boris Johnson... Uh, whatever you might think of him, um, he's pushing um, climate quite hard as the focus of his premiership. Um, does that impact with um, those who he takes along um, on that journey of the party faithful? 
Um, and it's interesting, it could open doors for others. Interesting jump for Dominic Graf whilst um, Nadine Zahawi and Sajid Javid remain really quite high. So, I mean, I think these things are always very interesting. I think they're worth paying attention to. Uh, we have to remember that this government, I think, very uniquely reflects the membership in terms of its policy aims, its station ambitions. Um, also a chance to run through vetting for the next Tory party leader. Um, still Sunak, um, he is favoured to be not only the next party leader, to, but he's also favoured to be the next Prime Minister, 5-2. to two. Um, Then it's Michael Gove at 6-1. to one. Interestingly, Gove, 47.6. He's just on the periphery. Um, Liz Truss is 7-1. to one. I've already said I do think that's value. Mm. Um, things will get harder for her um, as Foreign Secretary, but generally speaking, if you can avoid a Dominic Raab style blunder in Afghanistan, and interestingly, Dominic Raab um, has had a little bit of an approval rise recently, then there's potential there, and she can still be the face of global Britain, whatever that's defined as. Um, Jeremy Hunt is eight, Dominic Raab 14s, Sadie Javid 14s, Patel 18s, Dowd in 20s, Tukenhart 22s. Ben Wallace and Penny Morgan on 25. I think that's very interesting. And I'll keep coming back um, to those con home lead tables. I think they are more than worth speaking uh, about. Uh, before we finish up, what have you made of all the events in Glasgow and who comes out well from it? Um, Boris, I think, hasn't, in fairness, he's talked to talk at the very least this week. Uh, I think we got 26 was that for it to be a success, and the bar was raised very high, you probably need some sort of broad global commitment, 7.5. Mm. Um, there have been good commitments, I think. Uh, I think the money, I think the financial commitments are to be applauded. Um, we don't, we, we're obviously speaking like day three of the conference, even though the world leaders have gone home, um, which I found to be a bit of a wet blanket. Um, so who knows what we could be talking about in future episodes. But long story short, I think it's fallen short so far. Um, and that's not all down to the fall to the UK government. Um, net zero by 2070 from India, I think, upset quite a few people mm. um, in government, although plenty were briefing um, that they feel it's a more domestic thing and that getting India moving down that road is, is good news. Um, but you need, you need movement from India, China and the US, really, um, to, to make those big climate targets happen and I just wonder if um, they'll fall short of that I think you have to say the odds on they do which is tremendously disappointing Yeah and obviously China responsible for so many emissions and Europe actually really responsible for a small amount but but seemingly mm. trying to sort of lead the way in this thing, um, I don't know where we go, what have we got next week for the uh, the listeners and viewers uh, where will you be actually? <laughs> well, um, next week you might see me at home but if not um, I'll still be around maybe even back here um, in terms of, actually, just before we go, um, as we speak, there is the potential for something to happen with Real Cup through. Now, the Tory MP Owen Patterson was essentially um, not suspended by the Standards Committee, but um, the Standards Committee recommended he was suspended from the Commonwealth today, essentially yes. for extremely aggressive lobbying practices. Now, the force is out there. I think having it's a good scan it is very comprehensive and authoritative um but there's a twist with all this because patterson um says that he's been mistreated by the panel um that the report in, into is unfair he was acting in the public interest and he's got support from the toy party right as the prime minister they are having a vote now on amending it um on amending basically the standard system and the committee so that there will be essentially a government control committee with a Tory majority when it comes to these things in future. And many of the people backing the amendment, signing the amendment, have been reprimanded by that committee in the past. I think there's 14 had whatever. So we have actually an incredible act of blatant crookedness, like absolutely banana republic stuff, literally going on as we speak. And there's a lot of anger about it. No polling yet, but the potential is there for cut through. However, um, lots of things like that have happened. And as you and I well know, you look at the UGO um, poll later in the week, the field works on those two days and the Tories are up by 10 points. So they'll probably be up by 15. But I'll keep a watch on that. We'll review that next week. 
Uh, thank you very much, William Kajani. You all have a well. And that was the polling station, and we shall be back. We're not sure where, but we will be back next week. Mm-hmm.